Um, I'm reading this book, Against Leviathan, by Bob Higgs. And it's just a collection, well, just, it's not just anything. It's a collection of essays. It's not really uh, like one flowing text, like, say, Crisis and Leviathan or Depression, War and Cold War. Uh, this is a collection of eth essays written at different times. But it's a powerful book, and it's actually kind of good that it's a collection of essays because you can pick and choose and read them in any order and just, you know, go to the table of contents and see whatever catches you fancy and just read that one. And I guarantee you that pretty much every one is a gem, and you will come away greatly educated. Um, most likely, I, I know I am. Um... I just want to read to you, just just as an example. I'm, I, you know, I picked it up tonight again and sort of opened it to this. Uh, it's uh, chapter twenty um, or essay number twenty. It's called "Unmitigated Mercantilism." And I, I I hope that this demonstrates why everybody needs to read this book. Okay, all right. So, unmitigated mercantilism. When my son was growing up, I lived in constant fear that one day he would come to me and ask, "Dad, why do we have an expert import import bank?" Fortunately for me, that day never came. If it had, I would have been compelled to make a painful choice, either to lie to him, saying that we need the bank to promote U.S. exports and create jobs, or to hit him with the bitter truth, attesting that the bank is just another contrivance to shift wealth from the politically weak and alienated to the politically strong and connected, while sanctifying the transfer with incantations of economic humbug. James A. Harmon, the chairman of Expert Import Bank of the United States, or Exim Bank, during the late 90s, demonstrated that he possessed a high threshold for embarrassment. On the homepage of Exim Bank's website, he declared, for all the wide world to see, quote, Exim Bank is vigorously pursuing its mission to support U.S. exports and sustain American jobs by offering U.S. exporters the loans, guarantees, and insurance products they need to compete in the global marketplace. Well, okay, not everybody has had the opportunity to take Economics 101. Someone who one presumes has mastered both elementary and advanced economics is the current Harvard president and former U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers. This was written in, let's see, it was written before 2002 because there was a postscript 2002 at the end of it. So it was written, let's say, you know, more than 10 years ago. So, uh, Lawrence Summers. Uh, after all, Summers was awarded a PhD in economics by Harvard and taught at MIT before returning to Harvard to become the Nathaniel Ropes Professor of Political Economy in 1983. It seemed more than a little odd, therefore, when Summers publicly praised the Exim Bank for its stimulation of U.S. exports and its contribution to our national economic defense, quote-unquote. According to Summers, quote, the virtue of maintaining a strong and credible export-import bank is that it can help to deter abusive subsidies by other countries, end quote. It makes you wonder, what have they been teaching in the economics courses at Harvard? U.S. exports have been running in the neighborhood of $700 billion annually in recent years. According to Exim Bank's 1999 annual report, the bank supported, quote-unquote, in various ways, U.S. export exports valued at $16.7 billion in fiscal year 1999. Again, out of $700 billion of exports, $16.7 billion. Therefore, exports supported by Exim Bank amount to roughly 2% of U.S. exports. One strains to imagine how the exporters of the other 98% of the stuff managed to arrange financing. As for the job creation that the bank declares to be its very purpose, one need not uh, pause long over the mathematics. The U.S. gross domestic product is now approximately $10 trillion. Even if all of the workers required to produce the $16.7 billion of bank subsidized, uh, subsidized exports were to become permanently unemployed, highly unlikely outcome, the resulting increase in the U.S. rate of unemployment would be swallowed up in the rounding error. The repeated claim that the nation needs Exim Bank to create or maintain jobs is not just bad economics, uh, the kind that disregards opportunity costs, among other things. It is also inept, horrific. So what is the real story behind this economic train wreck? We can gain a better appreciation by examining the principal suppliers of the goods whose export the Exim Bank effectively subsidizes. Looking through the 1999 annual report, pages 20 through 27, one finds the names of such obscure and struggling enterprises as Brown and Root, General Electric, Hughes Space Communications, Westinghouse Electric, Bechtel International, 
Lockheed Martin Overseas, International Business Machines, Motorola, Federal Express, Case, Caterpillar, and Siemens Westinghouse Power. Would it be heartless of us to insist that these multinational corporate powerhouses line up financing for their, for their overseas sales without dipping the, into the taxpayers' pockets? By far, the most prominent corporate beneficiary of the Exim Bank's largesse is the Boeing Company. Its name is attached to 34 of the 82, I repeat, I repeat 34 out of 82, close to a half, deals for loans and long-term guarantees listed by country in the 1999 report. Moreover, for those same 82 deals, Boeing's deals accounted for 54% of the total amount of loans and 80% of the total amount of loan guarantees. Again, one company, almost half the number of deals, 54% of the total amount of loans, and 80% of the total amount of loan guarantees. Boeing. Little wonder that the Exim Bank has been called Boeing's Bank. Ten of those 34 Boeing loans and guarantees involved sales of aircraft to Chinese airlines, although the company's biggest listed deals, uh, totaling more than $2 billion of loan guarantees, involved sales of aircraft to Saudi Arabian companies. Well, might one ask, can the Saudis not get credit in the ordinary commercial market? <laughs> and so on and so forth. So, boys and girls, this is why you need to read this gentleman. He is amazing. He knows stuff that will make you educated and probably a little bit depressed. But you still need to know this. I prefer truth to the bliss of ignorance. Good night.